The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt d and I'm Michael Cross and I play Blackjack, a jackalope folk warlock of Sneaky Coyote. I'm Johnny Payne and I play Twitch Grimfoot, a rat folk necromancer. I'm Brooke Bullock and I play Zeonsi, a spider can rogue. I'm Connor Chenault. I play Jessica, a Yodi Ranger. Hi, I'm Ash King. I will be playing Cintra Redma, no paladin of the Bone Mother. I'm Kiri Hester. I will be playing Billy Possum, the Possum Fighter. And Aiden Cross as your dungeon master. Join us for Tales from the Ironwoods. But I don't, I don't have a tail. A deal has been made between the Dwarven clan Silverstone and the Knoll clan Ironweaver. They have decided to allow the Silverstone clan to settle on Ironweaver's land. In exchange, they would learn how to harvest ironwood bark from the ironwood trees. A group of interesting looking creatures were on their way to the reservation site for this clan. But as they had approached, they saw an encampment that was already there. What would you guys like to do? Do I know anything about this? As far as you're concerned, no one was supposed to be on this land. So I will pull the cudgel from my belt and start purposefully striding. So I guess they're not friends of yours? <clears throat> we'll find out. Coming, little one? Uh, Sintra, if you need some help, I think that uh... Zianzi and I will certainly be willing to back you up. We're not much for hand-to-hand fighting, but we can certainly provide assistance where we can. Well, come on, bunny boy, and stand back. Of you will say, yes, you all go on ahead and check that out. That is very weird. You don't, you, you do not know them, Sintra? I have no knowledge of this. Keep your people back. Uh, and the three gnolls that accompanied you will stay with the group, making sure that no chicanery happens among the dwarves. Everyone else accompanying Sintra? Yes. Carefully from the back here. Good. Jaska will follow after Twitch. Mm. Hey, Twitch. Yeah. I haven't had a qu- chance to talk to you quite yet, and I just don't want you to feel like you're being left out of the group. I'm being left out of the group? No. This is my group. Oh, nice. Have you been feeling left out, and that's why you're coming to talk to me? No. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. I mean, you have. You a, seem you, a little distant. You you serve a purpose. There's a reason for you being here. <laughs> well, Trust thank me, you. More than you know. Have you added Sintra and Billy to your list? I'm not sure about Billy, but <laughs> Sintra definitely. Oh, nice. All that muscle and sinew. I'm glad we're all getting along, and she'll pick up the pace to keep with everybody else. Well, it's always good to check in with leadership. Thanks for the visit. And I'll start <laughs> falling back a little bit. <laughs> Pretend I'm nursing this. You're welcome. Foot. What's just, our terrain again? So it, it appears to be kind of more grassland. They, this encampment basically on the edge of the Ironwoods, mm. right next to it. Let's say the, the Ironwoods is a bit northwest of you. So heading northwest, you'd go into the Ironwoods. Let's say the encampment looks like one big center tent with six surrounding it. And as you all are approaching, you see a figure heading your direction. And what you see appears to be a red tiefling says, who are you lot? I would ask you to declare the same. You are on Null territory. Null territory, you say? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, 
May I bring that up with my boss? Who is your boss? I will not state his name, but... Take us to him, then. All right, you so wish. And she leads you to the center tent where two guards flank it. Deontay would like to stealth. Maybe a stealth check. Yeah, so for sure. I would like to stealth with him. Okay, if I may ask, how are you hiding? Uh, Probably hunkered down in the grass. I'm taking up right beside you. Modified 23 for Zianci. Jessica's a little worried, a little nervous that this could go south pretty quickly, but she'll follow after Sintra, not trying to hide or anything. And a 22. Yeah, no one sees you. The tiefling is treating you very seriously. How close is the tree line? From the encampment and from we are, is it like 50 yards away, 100 yards away? It's, like I said, it's like right outside, so only like 30 feet away. Okay, very cool. You see the horses are kind of, they have horses hitched up near the edge of the forest. There are seven horses. And sneaking is what Zianci and I do well. Mm -hmm. So they don't even notice you as basically your null friend, Sintra, makes this big old presence known to where you guys aren't even seen. As you guys head in and the two guards stand to the side and as you enter, a bit of a ramshackle tent with what appears to be a human individual with a cowboy hat and what looks like a purple duster. He appears to be riding viciously on the desk. And as he looks up, you see his eyes are bloodshot. He says, oh, uh, well, hello there. Um, are you all with, uh, with Valeria? Uh, I'll assume not. Um, hello, uh, my name is uh, Charlie Lloyd. Surely you've heard of me, right? No, I haven't heard of you. Come on, esteemed criminal <clears throat> used to be part of the Black Smoke Gang, uh, you know. Let me consult with my lead general. Sintra, <laughs> have you heard of this you man? No, I haven't. No, we haven't. Really, really none of you have heard of me? I can't quite say I have either. I'm sorry, dear. I'm sure someone knows you. Wait. And honestly, quite frankly, I don't really care. No, no, wait, no, wait, Sintra. What, what did you say your name was again? Charlie Lloyd. No, no. Uh. They, they call me the, the Raven, that's, that's my nickname. The Raven. I'm so elusive. I know Sentra, of the Ravens, Raven? but I don't know the Raven. Nope. No. No, no really. bells. No. You see Billy kind of reach into Sintra's bag, pull out a tiny book, flip through some pages. We uh, hear of uh, human beings. Human, human beings. We know of black smoke. We know no gang of black. You're not made of smoke. I was part of a gang called the Black Smoke Gang. Well, until about five years ago, but that's besides the point. Oh, so they're not famous anymore? They kick you out or something? No, I left on purpose. They started serving this empire, and I was like, that's sort of like lawful, and I'm not part of that. And uh, yeah, I just like kind of left. I'm not sure if you know exactly where you are. What do you mean? I know perfectly where I am. Yeah? Sintra, why don't you tell him where he is? I slam my hands down on the desk, lean over. Again, you know, intimidation. Huge, massive sure. null. Since I'm on Sintra's shoulder, can I like, bare my teeth and give give Sintra the help? Yeah. yeah. Get help action okay, as, okay. as your possum just kind of growls. What? Possum didn't help. Possum did not help. I rolled five both times. Possum tried well, to help for a nine. For insight, he got an at one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, as you kind of see, he looks extremely tired, bloodshot eyes, and he's just like, okay, 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 okay. I see, I see the river of your courage is fed by the tributary trickling down your thigh. Ha! Um, well listen, you, you all might actually be of great service to me. You see, um, don't get mad, Sintra. We were attempting to harvest ironwood trees. I just grab the front of his coat. Let, 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 me, let me explain. Ah, uh, no, no, there's literally no thing to explain. Ah, you've done it. Human. Listen, that, there's- Because first off, not only are you trespassing on no land, you are also illegally harvesting iron bark. Listen, listen to me. There are far greater things in that forest right now. I am not your greatest threat. And I think personally, if we work together, we can put an end to it. You and your entire little band is going to be answering to the leadership of Clan Ironweaver. 
and it's going to be quite hilarious to see what they do to a measly little human like you that would dare to step foot on sacred ancestral territory. You see him look around for a moment. All right, then. I guess we're not going to settle this peacefully. And you hear him say an incantation, and he turns into mist as he is cast some sort of spell. And everyone roll initiative. Actually, before we go into initiative, what were the two outside of the tent doing? We're on the back of the tent, being able to kind of listen in on anything that's going on. So if any trouble happens, we can get under the tent and get inside as quickly as possible. Billy is currently on center sh shoulder, correct? Yeah. Are you standing behind these two? Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming you're at the front because I mean, I was literally right. Yeah, you were literally at the right desk, there, holding, holding by him by the scruff. Him, and then he turns to so mist in my claws. You two were outside. I will say, guarding the actual entrance was two guards and the tiefling that had led you. So, are you on the opposite side of those two? Correct. Correct. I think so. So, you yeah, guys are on the door. eastern side of that. Correct. Okay. Did we notice if the tent was an enclosed tent, or did it have like a smoke flap at the top? Did it was enclosed. That? Okay. Very good. Then Twitch, where were you? I was standing beside Sintra. Beside Sintra. Until she probably leaned forward and slammed her hands down on the table that I'm just... Okay. Who got a 20 or higher initiative? I got a 22. 22. Billy's ready for action. 15 or higher. I got a 15. A 16. 10 or higher? 10. 12. Zianzi. So then Zianzi, Blackjack. And then... Sintra, what'd you get? Six. Okay, Billy, we're starting with you. You saw the human turn to mist and disappear as now you see the two guards as well as the captain who is the tiefling opening the tent and attempting combat. So what would you like to do? So the guards burst in and they definitely looked like they definitely want to fight us, right? Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> After what just happened, yes, they do want to fight okay, you. Okay, just double checking. Interestingly enough, Billy can just turn on the shoulder and I would just like to leap. How far away are they? So from you, about 15 feet. Okay, great. I'm saying leap, but mechanically I'm just walking. I just don't want to climb down Sintra and walk over. Anyway, I leap with my short sword out and I'm going to attempt to attack the biggest, scariest looking one, whoever that is. That would be the tiefling. The tiefling, I attack. I attack them. So that's gonna be a 21 to hit. That will hit. Seven with my sword. So as you leap up into the air, do a twirl and land on your feet as you just kind of slash at the creature as you hit it, not really in the face, but you get it right in the chest as it looks a little damaged, but uh, appears to be looking fine as far as you can tell. Anything else, Billy? Yay team, go Sintra. It is now actually the captain's turn. So it's gonna look at you because you attacked and is going to attempt to first off attack with a scimitar. 13 to hit? No. So you attack with a scimitar. Will be a miss as well. And attack with a dagger will also be a miss. <laughs> as you see that the, the tiefling appears to be caught off guard as you have started attacking. Twitch, your turn. <laughs> as you saw this possum jump in front of you and is now standing guard between you and the others. So the one that's been damaged? I'm going to cast Infestation. So I need a con save. That'll be a 16. And it succeeded. So there we go, that's it. So I'm just going to <laughs> uh, step back a little bit so that now between me and them is Sintra. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my turn. Come, mouse men, attack. So Twitch, you take a step back as far as you can against the wall. Or against Not the really, just like, tin. so I was... Uh, like or behind getting us. behind... It's kind of moving and maneuvering around. So okay, yeah. Yeah. okay, gotcha. Yeah. Behind so moving behind Sintra. Sintra. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to Jaska, your turn. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand that. So by the door, there's the guard that came in, Billy in front, and then the captain on the side. So basically the captain's in the middle, and two guards flank the captain as well. Okay. You're That's about 10 feet back. Jaska's going to heave out a sigh. <sighs> Did we really have to start fighting? We could have talked this out a little more, but okay. And she will, as a bonus action on the tiefling, cast Hunter's Mark and pull out her short sword and go up and try and take a swing at him. That's a modified 20. That'll hit. That is 14 points of piercing damage. Okay, so you walked up to him 
and you just slash across their arm and you see a little bit of blood trickling down as they appear to be pretty strong with taking hits, as far as you can tell. Okay. Anything else, Jaska? That's it. Okay, moving on to Ziancy. You are outside and are on the backside of the tent. What you can see, actually, is three more bandits appear to be making their way towards the tent. Two more on each side and one on your side, actually. Ziancy will bonus action dash and climb up the side of the tent and go up to the peak of the tent. Give me a dexterity check. Let's go with acrobatics, actually. 14. Climbing up a tent, there's supports, but it's not that stable, so you're kind of sunken down a little bit into it as they kind of, as everyone inside just kind of sees this form just sunken down into the tent. And then once I see that there are other people coming, Ziancy says, Blackjack, we got company! And then shoots an arrow from a short bow toward whichever one happens to be in front of the ones coming our way. That is a modified 24. That'll hit. And so that is with, six points of damage. Uh, say with your stealth check, you get a sneak attack if you didn't do that. I didn't know since they were coming yeah. in. I'll say they didn't appear to see you as you ah, scrawled up. Okay. You, you took them by surprise. Awesome. So, oh, nice. So that makes the damage now 11. As you see the one heading towards the tent, you take your short bow right in the head, and all of a sudden he falls dead. Anything else? And just hollering out to Blackjack, we got company. Blackjack, it is your turn. Nice shot, Ziancy. Now, of course, it's my turn. Am I also stealth and hidden from them? Yep. All right. I'm going to shoot an Eldritch Blast with advantage. So you're going to come around the tent and shoot it at the ones that are at the front. Four and a two. A 10. That'll miss, unfortunately. Well, I certainly tried. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. That's my turn. Okay. As your Eldritch Blast completely flies off and misses. Oh, can I go under the tent? Yeah. Okay. I want to go under the tent <laughs> and see what's going on and say, friends, we've got company. More are on the way. So you lift up <laughs> and head inside the tent. Let's say you see the figure of Ziancy just kind of like going through the tent, kind of. Sintra. Ah, good, excellent. So I will turn, already had the cudgel in one hand, turn to look at these, and I, I will say, I want at least one alive. And then I will make a hand motion, and I will bless Jaska, Billy, and myself. I feel the blessing of the Bone Mother in my bones. Take your time to say this incantation as uh, some of you feel more invigorated by the Bone Mother. Yes. Anything else, Sintra? And I will stride up towards the captain, looking intent upon chomping his bones. So, uh, it is the bandit's turn, because they got like three, I think. One is going to look at, let's go with Sintra. One on the left is going to attack at you. Four yeah. miss. One ah. is going to attempt to hit Billy. That'll be a 21 to hit. Oh, yeah. As it slashes across you I and does- I have such tiny armor. <laughs> as it slashes across you and does four points of damage. Ow. The other two, one is going to pull out his revolver on the outside. One of them out on the outside is gonna pull out his revolver and attempt to shoot Ziancy. You aren't hidden right now, are you? Nope. Nope, so straight roll. Will a 12 hit? No, misses. Okay. Then one revolver shot coming at, you're inside the tent now. Correct. So let's go with Jaska. That's a nat one. As the chaos in the tent continues, Charlie Lloyd has disappeared, and now the players must find him. But first, they must deal with these bandits. Greetings and salutations, my friends. I'm Michael Cross. So great to have a moment to talk with you during this mid-show break. First off, I want to invite you all to join us as Patreon members. The money we raise helps us pay for things like music and sound effects you hear on the show, as well as money to go to events and make new fans. When you become a Patreon member, you get our episodes four days early, bonus content, access to our Discord server, and full versions of our roundtable discussions. You'll be joining other fans like Scott Wise, Don Mills, Heath Mormon, and the Lady Kate. So join us right now at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. 
Another way to support us is by getting your very own Red Dirt merchandise. You can find things like hats, hoodies, mugs, and t-shirts. Just click on the Merch tab at reddirtdnd.com or reddirtrpg.com. Since 2020, the Red Dirt D&D podcast has been close to another Oklahoma actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast, D20 to Curtain. And me personally, I've had a chance to work on stage with some of the actors on the show. So when you get done with this episode, you should check them out. Hello, fellow D&Ders. My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons & Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind-the-curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d20tocurtain.com or at d 20 to Curtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. If you're looking for more content, make sure to check out our YouTube page with Mysteries of Beatrix live every Wednesday, Keys from the Golden Vault from the Red Dirt Outlaws dropping every Tuesday at noon, and Plausible Deniability every other Thursday at 7 p.m. So come check it out at youtube.com slash at Red Dirt RPG or search for Red Dirt RPG on YouTube. And we would love to hear from you. Find us on social media at Red Dirt RPG. You can also get in touch with us through our website at reddirtrpg.com. In the meantime, make sure and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment on your favorite podcatcher so others can find us. All right, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Right now, let's head back to Red Dirt D&D. So, the combat continues with these bandits. Billy, it is your turn. In front of you, you still have the captain and the two other bandits flanking. What would you like to do? Sintra! Which one you want living? I like the tiefling. Okay! Can I get to one of the other guys without leaving the tieflings? Mm -hmm. Okay. They're like basically right next That's to each other. That's what I figured. Yeah. I thought I'd double check. So I'm a, it's gonna... a very condensed space. You all are kind of like squished in this tent right now. But I'm so small. So I will turn to one of the other guards and I'm going to try to attack him with my sword. 25 to hit. Against the other bandits? Yeah. Yeah, that'll hit. So it's going to be all sad damage. Only five damage. And then I'm going to action surge and I'm going to attack him again. 17. That'll hit. Oh, sad damage. Only four damage so from my short sword. You slash at both of his kneecaps. Ah. As you see him stumble a little bit, but he is still standing. Anything else, Billy? I uh, turn and can I see Twitch? Because I know you kind of had, okay, I wasn't sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. Mouse man, leave tiefling. And that is it, that's all I got. It is the bandit captain's turn. They're going to, let's go with that Sentra. More intimidating figure right now. Dirty 20 to hit for six points of slashing. Second attack with its scimitar, not one. Then with its dagger, it is only a 14 to hit. I lost concentration on bless. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. So as this figure <laughs> slashes across your torso, you all of a sudden are taken by its complete shock as it looked like they were going after Billy, but turned out to be you and you lose your concentration. Twitch, your turn. I am not a mouse. <laughs> point at Billy and say, you need to be declawed. And while I'm still pointing, swirl my other fingers around and then slightly twitch so that my finger points to the one that he kneecapped and fire off Toll the Dead. Was saving throw, please. Eight. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets a d12. Nine. As the bell toll of death rings out, the creature falls over dead. Good job, mouse man! I wasn't doing you a favor. I'm gonna need you later. And I'll jump around to the other side of Sentra. 
It is now Jaska, your turn. So hearing that Sintra wants to keep the captain alive, I will change my damage to be non-lethal, but slash at it with my short sword again. It's only an eight. That will miss, unfortunately. Yeah, it's fine. And that's it. So as Jaska misses and just whiffs the attack, <laughs> it is now Zianci, your turn. Zianci on the roof of the tent will once again shoot the bow with a modified 19. Who are you shooting at? At the closest one to the doorway as he's approaching. Okay. Outside bandits, yeah. That'll hit, roll damage. Nine points of damage. That one short bow arrow hits him right in the uh, arm and... He appears to be stumbling back a little bit as he looks hurt. Ah! Anything else? That's all I'm going to do. Just going to hold my position. Blackjack. Blackjack is going to bonus action. Cast Hex. Were one of the other guards hurt yet? The other one that just got hit? No, or inside, inside the tent. Oh, inside, inside the tent. No, they are, they, the other one looks fine. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and do an Eldritch Blast at him. A 14. That'll hit. 18 points of force damage. As your Eldritch Blast hits him, you just see him fall to the ground. He didn't even see it coming. And that's how you do it. Yeah, that's how I did it. As now standing in front of the tent, it appears to be only the tiefling captain. Sentry, your turn. So I will pull out my cudgel, two hand, and just try to knock him over the head to knock him unconscious. 12. To hit? Yeah. That'll miss. Okay. Ugh as you attempt to bonk him over the head and just dodges out of the way of it. As the tiefling looks at you and says, you're gonna have to try harder than that, Noel. That's why I've got the possum. How dare you insult Sintra! As the two bandits on the outside fire a shot at you again, is Yancy. A 12 to hit. That misses. Uh, attack coming at, another shot coming at Jaska. 18 to hit. That hits. For seven points of piercing damage as the shot rings out and hits you right in the chest. Oh! Be careful! As we come back to the top with Billy. In a furious rage, we'll turn to the captain and just slash violently at their shins. Oh no! He's so angry, he only rolled an eight. <laughs> Blinded by rage, he can't even hit their shins. <laughs> yeah, you, you try, but it appears to just be like barely dodging on the way with their feet. <laughs> Anything else, Billy? No. It is the captain's turn. We'll go with two attacks coming at. I will use my reaction, because I forgot that I can do this. Um, and protection, so he rolls with disadvantage. Is it on one attack? Or? On one attack. Okay. Yeah, just on one. So, so one of them, you'll roll with disadvantage. First one? Will be a no. So Billy leans forward with his tiny shield and deflects the sword slash. <gasps> Second attack coming at Sintra. 14 to hit. Nope. <laughs> One attack coming at Billy with a dagger. 21 to hit. Oh yeah. Five points of damage. Okay. <laughs> you attack me. You beat me, you win honor of fighting Sintra. Twitch, your turn. <laughs> General, do you have anything else to say to this one? Oh, there's a lot of information I need out of this brain. Okay. Brain. Got it. And <laughs> I will cast <laughs> Ray of Sickness. Oh. I can't talk to him if he's dead! How about 21? Woo. 21 will hit. 10 points of damage, and I need a con save. That'll be a 10. Ew! He's poisoned until the end of my next turn. Poison is disadvantage on attack rolls too, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> then I'm going to just slip back to the other side of. <laughs> he just, just going back, forth, yeah. back, forth, back, forth. That's awesome. Yep. As the and sickness comes out at this tiefling, and they appear to like start coughing a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What? Uh, I, I think he's ready to listen to you now, General. My turn. Jaska, your turn. She'll try one more time to try and hit the captain, going non-lethal. 22 to hit. That'll hit. Nine points piercing. <laughs> captain is now looking pretty damaged as you see a little bit of blood dripping from them. And uh, I will move to where I'm no longer in the opening of the flat up of the tent, so the dude outside won't keep hitting me. So you move maneuver around? Yeah, just as much as I can, yeah. so I don't 
provoke opportunity attack. Zianci. Zianci will shoot again, maybe one last time before he gets inside at the one that uh, took an arrow to the upper arm. Natural 16. That'll hit. Five points of damage. That one is dead. Sweet. Ah! Uh, Zianci is just dispatching all the ones on the outside for you guys. I wasn't worried about it. I knew Zianci could take care of it. Blackjack, I think one's coming. Blackjack, it is your turn. So how many people are in the tent? I mean, enemies. There's one now, and there's only one person outside the tent, it appears. Okay, so this is the one you've got. Okay, you guys seem to have this one handled. I'll go out there, make sure everything's okay. And I go back under the tent and see the guy, and I cast Eldritch Blast. For a 14. That'll hit. 12 points. Uh, wow. Four stands. <laughs> yeah, he disintegrates to the ash. Was that the one you were talking about, Zianci? That's the one! Fabulous. Well, he seems to be no problem at all now. So, all the bandits have been dealt with, so we're moving on to... Sintra. I'm gonna try again to club this guy over the head. A 14? That'll miss. So he completely whipped the attack again as it just clangs off their armor. Ah. I'm used to him being taller, okay? (laughs) It's true. (laughs) Used to the sparring matches when the gnolls are a bit mm-hmm. taller. Billy, your turn. Now I'm starting to wonder if they just all threw the matches against me. Uh, Billy will give you a reassuring pat <laughs> on the <laughs> knee. Thanks, Billy. It's okay. I defeat him. And I will try to hit him. And I guess I'm going to try to hit him non lethally. Because uh, Sandra wants to keep him alive. <laughs> oh, what's up, one? La, la, la. I can only do lethal damage. <laughs> I am lethal weapon. That is all I'm doing. Okay. How you do non-lethal. <laughs> Flat on the blade, Billy. Flat on the blade. It is the captain's turn. Two attacks coming at Billy this time, considering you protected. He is a bit annoyed with you. The 10 to hit. Nope. Ah. 16 to hit. No. Ooh. Shield comes up. Ah. Uh, then a dagger attack coming at Sintra. Protection, disadvantage. But even with disadvantage, that was still a 17 to hit. That'll hit. Only five points of damage. Oh. Twitch, your turn. The captain's the only one in the tent? Well, the only one still alive, actually. So we're up here at the table, basically, where the right still. Mm-hmm. Where, is there any ornate anything on this table, like even a paperweight to hold a map flat or something? It might be made of wood or stone. I like would say that there, there's like a wooden figurine of a wolf. There's a figurine on a base? Yes. I'm going to take the figurine and clutch it in both hands and just start slowly stepping backwards. Like, <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's all going so well. <laughs> and that's my turn as I snap the base <laughs> off the wolf. Jaska, okay. your turn. One more try non lethally towards this captain. 21. That'll hit. Another nine points, non-lethal. Still looking pretty bad. Ah! And that's the end of my turn. Moving on to Zianci. Zianci scans the outside. Any other combatants heading our way? Doesn't look like it. He bonus action dashes down the tent, weirdly down on two legs, and then hops to the ground, on the down the side, hops to the ground. I think he has about 15 feet of movement left, so Continuing that to run up behind the captain, pulls a sap and swings at the back of this guy's head. An 11. No <laughs> miss. <laughs> Blackjack, your turn. Can I get underneath and get to him in hand to hand? Yes. Good. As I'm running, I'm going to pull out my two daggers and I'm going to try to hit him with the hilt of them so that non lethally. So, first attack is going to be a 14. Don't miss. <laughs> Second attack offhand, <laughs> 22, That'll 23. I still get my hex, because it's any attack. <laughs> 11 points of non-lethal damage. Now they're looking very, very, very oh. good. Sintra, your turn. Out of pure frustration, I'm gonna bite him. Okay. You can do it. Non-lethally? <laughs> Non-lethally. Okay. 18 to bite him. You see him attempt to parry it with his scimitar, but you break through the blade and bite him. Seven points of non-lethal piercing damage. I'm gonna knock him unconscious. You know that thing that predators do where they just bite and they just hold until I can feel him stop breathing and just go limp and then, yeah, and then I'm just like holding him by like the back of the shirt. 
Sintra Mighty Warrior, she defeats all of you. So we are out of initiative. What would you guys like to do? Well, that was rather nasty. So I guess we're going to uh, try to question this person. Where's the other guy? That's what I'd like to know. He turned into smoke. Uh, did you guys see him out there? Did we see any kind of smoke coming out of the tent at any point? Out of the middle tent? Yeah. Yes, you did see, like, smoke. Well, we saw something, but we don't know what it was. We, was that the person who you were talking to? Yeah. yeah. You know more about magic than we do. You Let's tell see. us. Twitch, give me an arcana check. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you're the one who saw it, and you're more magically inclined. While he's doing that, I will tie up the tiefling. Give me a sleight of hand check. I help. You cannot tell what type of magic this was. Sintra, what'd you get for tying up? 16. Billy comes over, checks it, make sure it's all it's possum proof. I just slap him and I say, he's not going anywhere. So what'd you guys like to do? Well, first I'm going to lay on hands because I am at half of my total hit points. So I will heal myself for five. <laughs> I check the desk first to see, because he was writing in something, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, I check the desk. So looking at the desk and looking at his notes that he was scrambling to write, he describes a creature with multiple eyes that had charmed and turned the rest of the gang against him. He describes a strange metallic object that had fell from the sky. Very strange. And then he also describes that he was saved by some sort of creature that had gave him his newfound abilities. So he couldn't always do the smoke thing. Nope. What I would say is that Sintra would probably gather up his notebook, anything else from the desk, put it in her pack. Let's say in the desk uh. you also find some, unfortunately, some iron wood that was not correctly taken apart and dispatched. I shake my head and make note of that, but I start walking, grabbing the guy that I tied up. While you're doing that, Zianzi and I would like to loot the bodies. He won't wake up for a little while unless you give him a hit point. I will say while Sintra is going through his desk, Billy would have just unarmed the tiefling. So taken, mm -hmm. gone through, make sure that all of his weapons are thrown on the other side of the you, room. You can do that. And while Zianzi is looting the body, he is with a 15 stealthily doing something else. The ironwood pieces, did you take them? I want to pick one up and follow you. Yeah, but say Sintra would probably grab them as well to take, because her intent, you see now that this battle is done, she's heading back to those other three null warriors that had come with her, because she's planning to question this tiefling, but she also wants to do it with the presence of Clan Ironweaver. It's like, yes, she speaks for Ironweaver, but... This is on their territory, so they need to be informed. I'm going to follow along with you, fidgeting with a piece of ironwood that you missed. Mm -hmm. Will you notice I'm fidgeting with it? I will hand it over. Sintra doesn't notice that you are playing with a piece of the iron bark. And it doesn't get handed over. Did we find anything when we were looting the rest of the tents and the bodies? And Okay, then we'll head back as well. So, before you head back, you look around for just a moment and see a little sneaky figure getting up on a horse near the Ironwoods. And the horse neighs and raises its hooves up in the air. And the figure appears to be Charlie Lloyd. And he says, you almost caught me, but it is my time to go. And he heads off into the woods. Red Dirt D&D, &D, Tales from the Ironwoods, is Aiden Cross as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock as Ziancy, Johnny Payne as Twitch, Carrie Hester as Billy, Connor Chenold as Jaska, Ash King as Sintra, and I'm Michael Cross as Blackjack. Special thanks to our Silver Star Paladin patron, Shenanigans Unplugged. Our theme music was created by the Cinemagician PJ Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride, our sound effects and additional music, courtesy of TabletopAudio.com, Sirenscape, and Monument Studios. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at RedDirtDnd.com. If you enjoy the new campaign of Red Dirt d, d make sure to subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt d, &D. You can also support the show at Patreon.com slash RedDirtDnd at whatever giving level works best for you. Join us next time as we travel farther into the Ironwoods. How are you hiding? 
uh, probably hunkered down in the grass. Okay. And like behind the tumbleweeds. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little see through. <laughs> And then I have to legally say this once per session. Go for the eyes, boo! (laughs) The tiefling appears to be caught off guard as you have started attacking. What? You didn't expect the possum to leap and attack you? Can't say they did. Uh, (laughs) Twelve? To hit? Yeah. That'll miss. Okay. As you attempt to bonk him over the head and just dodges out of the way of it. Ash's rolls as a player are so much <laughs> different than Ash's rolls as a master. Do you, get, do you get advantage on attack rolls against someone who's poison? No. no, it's just disadvantage. No, yeah. It's just disadvantage. Bummer. I wish. Yeah. Right. I really wish. Well, we could just play with the flanking rolls and advantage <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Suddenly introduce no, flanking rolls. I hate flanking rolls <laughs> so much. A 14? That'll miss. <laughs> Non lethal just isn't. I hate this thing. game. <laughs> <laughs> this game is terrible. Why did I decide to play? <laughs> Only five points of damage. Pure ah, my kidneys. <laughs> you need shield. <laughs> you need shield on your kidneys. <laughs> There's like a wooden figurine of a wolf. He heard of wildfire. He has the merch. The uh, <laughs> official wildfire merch line. I'm going to. My, wildfire is a is a crafty businessman. He would have figured it out. And that's my turn as I snap the base <laughs> off the wolf. On the bottom of the, there's a sticker uh, that says 10 gold, and you think, wow, that's overpriced. <laughs> now they're looking very, very, very good. Uh. Why won't you die? <laughs> Sindra, this is your chance. Take the final blow. Yes, yeah. you did see, like, smoke. Well, we saw something, but uh, we figured something, uh, someone had started vaping. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a hookah bar in here. Uh, <laughs> Baby, won't you but we... And that is where we're going to end it. Someday, I'm going to kill that man. So. You'll remember this is the day you almost <laughs> caught Charlie Lloyd. <laughs>